Hi, my name is Ted O'Connell and I'm the author of USMLE Step 2 Secrets. This is part one of the cardiology chapter. Let's get started. What is your job when the Step 2 examination describes a patient with chest pain? Make sure that the chest pain is not because of any life-threatening condition. Usually you must try to make sure that the patient has not had a heart attack. What elements of the history and physical examination steer you away from a diagnosis of myocardial infarction? First, wrong age. In the absence of known heart disease, strong family history, or multiple risk factors for coronary artery disease, a patient younger than age 40 is extremely unlikely to have an MI. Next, lack of risk, risk factors. A 60-year-old marathon runner who eats well and has a high level of high-density lipoprotein and no cardiac risk factors other, other than age, is unlikely to have a heart attack. Next, the physical characteristics of the pain. If the pain is reproducible by palpation, it is, if it is from the chest wall, not the heart. The pain associated with an MI is usually not sharp or well localized. The pain should not be related to certain foods or eating. Even so, many physicians still want to make sure that a heart attack has not occurred with at least an electrocardiogram and possibly one or more sets of cardiac enzyme levels. For the step two examination, however, these clues that we've mentioned should steer you away, steer you toward an alternative diagnosis. What findings on electrocardiogram should make you suspect a myocardial infarction? After a heart attack, ECG would show flipped or flattened T waves, ST segment elevation, and or Q waves in a segmental distribution. ST segment depression means ischemia, elevation means injury. And when looking at Q waves in a segmental distribution, that means uh, such as leads 2, 3, and AVF for an inferior infarct. Describe the classic pattern of chest pain in a myocardial infarction. The pain is classically described as a crushing or pressure, pressure sensation. It is a poorly localized substernal pain that may radiate to the jaw, shoulder, or arm. The pain is usually not reproducible on palpation, and in patients with a heart attack, often does not resolve with nitroglycerin, as it often does in angina. The pain usually lasts at least half an hour. What tests are used to diagnose a myocardial infarction? Other than an ECG, the patient with a my possible myocardial infarction should have serial determinations of troponin, usually drawn every six to eight hours, three times before a heart attack is ruled out. Troponin levels stay elevated for more than 24 hours. Radiographs may show cardiomegaly and or pulmonary vascular congestion. Echocardiography may show ventricular wall motion abnormalities. Describe the classical physical examination findings in a patient with myocardial infarction. Patients are often diaphoretic, anxious, tachycardic, tachypnic, and pale. They may have nausea and vomiting. With large heart attacks that cause heart failure, look for bilateral pulmonary rolls in the absence of other pneumonia-like symptoms. You can also see distended neck veins, an S3 or S4 heart sound, new murmur, hypotension, and or shock. What historical points should steer you toward a diagnosis of myocardial infarction? Patients often have a history of angina or previous chest pain, murmurs, arrhythmias, risk factors for coronary artery disease, hypertension, or diabetes. They may also be taking medications such as digoxin, furosemide, cholesterol medications, antihypertensives, or other cardiac medications. Describe the treatment for a myocardial infarction. Treatment involves admission to the intensive or cardiac care unit. Several basic principles should be kept in mind. One, early reperfusion is indicated if the time from onset of symptoms is less than 12 hours. The patient and medical center criteria determine choice of reperfusion therapy. Early reperfusion, fewer than four to six hours, 
is preferred to try to salvage myocardium. Reperfusion may be accomplished by fibrinolysis or per percutaneous coronary intervention, that is, balloon angioplasty with stent. Coronary artery bypass grafting may be required. Other treatments, two, ECG monitoring is essential. If ventricular tachycardia occurs, use amiodarone. Three, give so-called MONA therapy, that is, morphine, oxygen, nitroglycerin, and aspirin. Control pain with morphine, which may improve pulmonary edema if it's present. Give the oxygen by nasal cannula and maintain an oxygen saturation greater than 90%. Administer nitroglycerin and aspirin. Next, beta blockers, which patients without contraindication should take for life, reduce the mortality rate of myocardial infarction as well as the incidence of a second heart attack. Administer clopidogrel. Administer unfractionated or low molecular weight heparin. An ACE inhibitor or angiotensin receptor blocker should be started within 24 hours. And finally, administer an HMG-CoA reductase inhibitor, the so-called statins. True or false, with good management, patients with an MI will not die in the hospital. That's false. Even with the best medical management, patients may die from a myocardial infarction. They also may have a second heart attack during hospitalization, so watch for sudden deterioration in their clinical status. When is heparin indicated in the setting of chest pain and myocardial infarction? Heparin should be started if unstable angina is diagnosed, if the patient has a cardiac thrombus, or if severe congestive heart failure is seen on echocardiogram. The step two examination will not ask about other indications, which are not as clear cut. Do not give heparin to patients with contraindications to its use, such as active bleeding. What clues suggest the common non-cardiac causes of chest pain? For gastroesophageal reflux or peptic ulcer disease, look for a relation to certain foods, such as spicy foods or chocolate, and also look for smoking, caffeine intake, or symptoms when lying down. Pain is relieved with antacids or acid-reducing medications. Patients with peptic ulcer disease often test positive for Helicobacter pylori. For chest wall pain from causes such as costochondritis or bruised or broken ribs, the pain is well localized and reproducible on chest wall palpation. For esophageal problems such as achalasia, nutcracker esophagus, or esophageal spasm, uh, this is often a difficult differential. The question will probably give a negative workup for myocardial infarction or mention the lack of atherosclerosis risk factors. Look for abnormalities with barium swallow in the case of achalasia or on esophageal manometry. Treat achalasia with pneumatic dilatation or botuli botulism toxin administration. Treat nutcracker esophagus or esophageal spasm with calcium channel blockers. If medical treatments are ineffective, surgical myotomy may be needed. For pericarditis, look for a recent viral upper respiratory infection. The ECG shows diffuse ST segment elevation the erythrocyte sedimentation rate, or ESR, is elevated, and a low-grade fever is present. Classically, the pain is relieved by sitting forward. The most common cause is infection with Coxsackie virus. Other causes include tuberculosis, uremia, malignancy, lupus, or other autoimmune diseases. For pneumonia, chest pain is caused by pleuritis. Patients also have cough, fever, and or sputum production. Ask about possible sick contacts. Aortic dissection is associated with severe tearing or ripping pain that may radiate to the back. Look for a history of hypertension or evidence of Marfan syndrome, such as a tall, thin patient with hyperextensible joints. Blunt chest trauma can cause aortic laceration and pseudoaneurysm, which are different conditions that are often managed similarly. How can you recognize stable angina? 
The chest pain of stable angina begins with exertion or stress and remits with chest with rest or calming down. The pain is described as a pressure or squeezing pain in the substernal area and may radiate to the shoulders, neck, and or jaw. It is often accompanied by shortness of breath, diaphoresis, and or nausea. The pain is usually relieved by nitroglycerin. An ECG done during an acute attack often shows ST segment depression, but in the absence of pain, the ECG is often normal. The pain should last, last less than 20 minutes or be relieved after sublingual nitroglycerin. Otherwise, there may be progression to unstable angina or myocardial infarction. Define unstable angina. How is it diagnosed and treated? In strict terms, unstable angina is defined as a change from previously stable angina. If a patient used to experience angina once a week and now experiences it once a day, the patient technically has unstable angina. Unstable angina usually consists of normal or only minimally elevated cardiac enzymes, ECG changes, and prolonged chest pain that does not respond to nitroglycerin initially, like a heart attack. The pain often begins at rest. Treatment is similar to that for a myocardial infarction. The patient is admitted to the coronary or intensive care unit. Initial treatment begins with oxygen, aspirin, and nitroglycerin. The patient should be given a beta blocker, clopidogrel, heparin in either unfractionated or low molecular weight form, and a glycoprotein 2B3A receptor inhibitor. An ACE inhibitor or angiotensin receptor blocker should be given as well. Consider emergent PTCA if the pain does not resolve. Almost all patients have a history of stable angina and coronary artery disease risk factors. Describe variant or prinzmetal angina. This rare type of angina is characterized by pain at rest, unrelated to exertion, and ST segment elevation. Cardiac enzymes are normal. The cause is coronary artery spasm. Prince metal angina usually responds to nitroglycerin and is treated over the long term with calcium channel blockers, which reduce arterial spasm. Define silent myocardial infarction. How common is it? Patients with a silent myocardial infarction do not develop chest pain. Their symptoms include congestive heart failure, shock, confusion, and delirium, especially in elderly patients. MIs are silent in up to 25% of cases, especially in diabetic patients with neuropathy. That's the end of part one of the cardiology chapter. Please join us uh, for the part two video.